Okay, this lesson for the Corne Project class is from an article called The Great Meaning of Metanoia. That's the term repentance, and that controversy uh, obtains and persists. <clears throat> this article has an interesting uh, statement. It refers to the English word repent and how the Bible doesn't mean what the English word means. So I'll reference that article in just a moment. But they called attention to Mark 1.15. Mark 1, 15, so let's just write that. Let's just look at that one, and then we'll go back to our text that we often looked at, uh, Acts 20, 21. So here's Mark 1, 15, and saying, Ho to that, pe play rotai oh. by rotai that's reduplicated stem that's a perfect passive indicative and saying that pe play left out the ada there there we go pe play rotai Oh, Kairos. This is uh, time, season, season, that the season has been fulfilled and remains filled. Kai. So we'll just put a colon there. Indeed. Yeah. And this is a word, Angekin, Gekin. It's from uh, Angizo. It has compensatory lengthening. It's perfect, indicative, active. So we have uh, and saying, those of you that are using your language, that has been fulfilled. The season has been fulfilled, and I'll just use this as emphatic. Indeed, and this is has drawn near, it's perfect indicative, perfect active, it has drawn near, and you know in perfect, it, and remains near, and remains near, so we have a basilea, you all know these vocabulary. So this is the kingdom. To the of the God. You all have this. Uh, of the God. So indeed the kingdom of God has drawn near and remains near. So we'll put an exclamation point here. And then here comes the command. Meta no ete. This is a present active indicative. You all, you all, o a s a omen ete. You notice we have uh, this is meta no eo, so we have that yoda there. You all always present tense be. Minding in association with now that's that's wording it out exactly. Metanoite Kai. That's and I'll just write that before I forget. And this is uh Pistu ete, omen ete. That's present active indicative. You can see that in your declension. There's the uh, verb from pistuo. There's your primary active ending. And present active imperative in this case. This is a present active imperative as well. And now so, and always be minding 
sorry, always be believing Always be believing. So you all always be in associate, be minding in association with. Let me mark that off so I don't get that. So this is this word here, long translation, worded out, it's command, and always be believing. And then we have in to you on Gelio. There we go. So always be believing in the gospel. There's that word. Correct message. That's how it would word out. So that's that's the first text to which they make reference. And we can go look at Acts 20, 21, which actually demonstrates the case they're building. So let's see if we can write that out before we run out of time here. I'll try to be expeditious. So we have this one. I have to retire this marker. So let's move on. There we go. Dia. And there's the word mart. Mart. Dia mart. Ear. Aminos. Where Paul said... Uh, test, thoroughly testifying for himself. Yes. Uh, you. Uh, what is that? You. Die always to Jewish ones. Te. Both to Jewish ones. Kai. And then it was El. Lysin. And to Greeks, to Greeks, and then he has uh, Tain, and then Ace, Ton, Theon, Theon. So, thoroughly testifying for myself to Jewish ones. both to Jewish ones and to Greeks. The into the God. You remember Ace appears 1,700 times in the Greek New Testament, always takes its object in the accusative case, the God. So Noah is thoroughly testifying from Dia. I'll use that. We'll just use thoroughly since it adds emphasis. Thoroughly testifying and it's middle for myself okay thoroughly testifying both to Jewish ones and to Greeks the into the God so and he's referring to the meta noion and which we we've just covered that so many times and this is the uh, mind in association with, there we go. And then we have this uh, conjunction, chi, and then we have pistine. And we have that definite article here, repeats here. And this is the faith. So let's write this out. That is, this should be that is, because the way the word order is set up to tell us that is faith. Faith, the faith, the faith, ace into uh, ton, kirion, into the Lord, Hamon of us. I think I got the word order out. Into the Lord of us, yea, soon, that's Jesus, Christon. There we go, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we'll check the spelling in that because I want to use the Greek to help you with that, but 
we need to look at the points made here. This is David J. Stewart, and I'll include the link uh, for this article. But he says, um, I was searching the internet one day, researching the topic of repentance, and found the following precious article by Eli Braley, a writer, pastor, and evangelist from New Brunswick, Canada. There is not a more important subject in the churches than what it means to repent. So they've really emphasized, uh, they really draw attention. He says, most churchgoers don't know that the English word for repentance means something completely different than the Greek word metanoia. Well, we know here in this text, the previous verse in Mark 1.15, it was referring to the gospel of the kingdom that John was preaching. And we know that in this text, we see that if, if we just word it out, you all always be minding, minded. And, and if you were raised in the South as I, your father would tell you often, be minding him and you better mind me. He used mind as a verb just as the Greek New Testament. So mind, like similar to when we're commanded to obey or we're commanded to listen. It's This is a word that's mind and the word meta in association with. Same word in the Great Commission where Jesus said, I will be in association with you all. So he goes on, whereas the Greek word metanoia means to change one's mind. He says the English word for repent specifically means to sorrow, grieve, and turn away from sins. He says these are two drastically different meanings, which as you can see, convey two completely different plans of salvation. Now this is quite a oh, uh, an alarming uh, observation and declaration as we go through this. He says, obviously, in order to turn to God, you must of necessity turn from something. However, God does not require us to turn from anything to be saved. And I was uh, quite aware of how subjective it is for people to want others to uh, mind in disassociation with things, which even Dr. Charles Spurgeon said, no one achieves perfect repentance because they can't. Uh, most of us learn later. I was just a child when I trusted Jesus Christ for everlasting life and then went forward, received, was baptized by that ecclesia, into that ecclesia, and uh, years and years and years now, let me see, that's uh, 50 years ago. So I've learned many things uh, that I'm called to mind in association with in relationship to the gospel that is much more and far beyond the moment I trusted, uh, met the obligation to believe and the object into Jesus Christ and the objective for everlasting life. It's much more I'm aware of in my minding in association with, especially the gospel of the kingdom and all the, that uh, thereunto appertains. But he went on and said, since the word metanoia simply means to change one's mind, it requires supplemental information because we don't know what to change our mind about. Whereas the English word repent definitely means to turn away from sins. The Greek word metanoia doesn't give us any specifics. So he said the word of God gives us the needed supplemental information. In our text verse from Mark 1.15, he says, Repent ye and believe the gospel. Hence, repentance is unto the gospel itself. And that's true. God gives us uh, the definition of what it is. Uh, he wants us to mind in association with. That is, he gives us the object of this preposition. Remember in the Koine Greek, it's very wordy, highly inflected. So let's go to Acts 20, 21. And I'll include this as four pages, much more. But Paul said, thoroughly testifying for himself to bo both to Jewish ones and to Greeks, the mind in association with, notice that, into the God, this is the Father of Jesus Christ, that is faith, definitively the faith into the Lord of us, Jesus Christ. So uh, this, this has merit. Uh, it's quite alarming. It is difficult because he's very much uh, King James uh, only advocate. And yet he takes issue. And throughout the article, he uh, stops and iterates his support for the King James Bible and he was just making a point about an English word that has taken on meaning that might be far removed uh, from the Bible word. So let me back up and let you see the board, and then I will be quiet and uh, let you have this lesson. And I'll try to keep these as I'm doing now, 15 minutes, uh, and make it brief for you. Have a blessed day.